All right, guys. Well, welcome to the wide receivers and tight ends uh, presentation for pro football history. This is Mr. Schauber, and I hope you can learn something about the some of the greatest wide receivers and tight ends in history, and uh, and that you enjoy the presentation. Let's start off with Don Hudson. Probably the first great wide receiver in pro football. Uh, he is credited with creating many of the modern routes that uh, receivers and tight ends use today. And he just, he was so far ahead of his time as far as the ability to catch the ball and run great routes. And the passing game really um, opened up in pro football because of him. Uh, he played for the Packers for a decade. Uh, from the mid 30s to the mid 40s and you can see his career stats almost 8,000 yards receiving and 99 touchdown catches uh, defenses just didn't know you know how to how to guard him um, eight-time first team all pro receiver three NFL championships with the Packers and uh, you can see two-time uh, NFL MVP uh, as a wide receiver both in, in 1941 and 42 uh, the Packers um, Retired his number 14 jersey, which was the first number retired by the organization. That's quite an honor. And when he retired, he held 18 major NFL records. And you can see that as of the end of the 2012 season, um, you know, and I know that's eight years ago now, but you can just see how great he was for so long and how many records he held for so long. Um, he held the record for most seasons leading the league in pass receptions with eight and most consecutive seasons leading the league in receptions with five. Most seasons leading the league in pass receiving yards gained seven times, and he did that four times consecutively. Most seasons leading the league in pass receiving touchdowns, nine, and most seasons leading the league in total touchdowns with eight. Um, he just was dominant. And, uh, you know, like I said, he, he revolutionized the passing game in, in pro football. Here's some pictures of Don Hudson. I love the old pictures because you can see the old helmet they used to use. Um, nothing like the helmets today, of course. Uh, obviously, equipment has changed quite a bit, but his legendary number 14 for the Green Bay Packers, Don Hudson. Steve Largent played his entire career for the Seattle Seahawks from the mid 70s to the late 80s. He had come out of Tulsa University uh, you can see 5'11", 184 pounds he's listed at, and uh, not a big guy. He was kind of slow, uh, but he ran routes like nobody I had ever seen and probably still have never seen. His routes were precise, and his hands were like glue. If he could, if he could touch it, he could catch it. Uh, he was, you can see he was a fourth-round pick, 117th pick overall in the 1976 draft. People didn't expect much from him. And he goes to the Seahawks, and he just uh, he just was awesome. He was my favorite player when I was a kid because he played for the Seahawks, who are in, in the state of Washington. I grew up in the state of Washington. His name is Steve. My first name is Steve. Uh, when I played football, I wanted to be Steve Largent, so I played wide receiver. Uh, but Steve Largent was, you can see, seven Pro Bowl selections. He was a first-team All-Pro one year and a four uh, four-time second-team All-Pro, so five All-Pro teams. And you can see his career stats, his receptions, his yards, and his touchdowns. When he retired, he held the all-time NFL record in all three of those categories. That's how prolific of a receiver he was. He had eight seasons with at least 1,000 yards receiving. Uh, he was a nice guy. He was always doing a service in the community and humanitarian stuff. That's why he even won the, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award in 1988. His jersey, number 80, is retired by the Seahawks, and he was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1995. Uh, uh, you can see there I wrote down first receiver to, uh, to, to reach 100 touchdown catches. Of course, all of these records, receiving yards, touchdown catches, receptions, have all been broken now um, you know, since he retired, but he held them all at one time. After his retirement, he got into politics and served as uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives for the state of Oklahoma. Um, and he was just amazing. I remember I have, well, I still have that football card you see on the left there. 
the upper left, and uh, mine is autographed by him because when I was a little kid, I begged my dad to go to the Seahawks training camp one year. They held it in the town of Cheney, Washington, which was about um, half an hour or so from my parents' house. And so my dad took me, and you know, he told me, hey, football practice is boring. I'm warning you, it's going to be, we're going to be out here for three hours, and it's going to be boring. You're not going to like it. And but I was so enamored with pro sports and well, sports in general. And, you know, I'd seen these guys play on TV and I was so just, you know, just transfixed by, by these guys. And so I went out and I, I remember loving it. I thought it was great. And uh, after practice, uh, all the kids, you know, and some of the adults crowded around the, by the chain link fence where the players came over toward and, and we, we tried to get autographs. And I just remember, uh, Steve Largent came over and I was in awe of him, you know, and, and I'm a little kid. I don't know. I can't remember how old I was, six or seven or eight years old, whatever I was. And, uh, I just remember him grabbing, uh, my, the pen out of my hand and taking my football card and he signed it and gave it, gave it back to me. And I just thought it was the greatest thing of all time. So Steve Largent's still absolutely, um, my favorite receiver ever. And, uh, he's one of my all time favorite players. Art Monk is one of the great pass catchers in history, no doubt. Played for a decade and a half, mostly for the Redskins. Uh, he was pretty highly touted out of Syracuse University. You can see he was the 18th pick in the 1980 draft. He was a uh, first-team All-Pro in 84 and a second-team All-Pro in 85. Um, he helped the Redskins win four NFC championships, which means they went to four Super Bowls while he was on their team. And he won three of those Super Bowls with the Redskins. Uh, you can see his career stats. And he broke Steve Largent's receptions record. He was the first receiver to reach 900 career receptions. And he was the first player in NFL history to record a touchdown reception in 15 straight seasons. He was uh, productive into his later years of his career. He was a tremendous uh, receiver. Also, like Largent, ran great routes. Art Monk was Mr. Reliable at the wide receiver position. The Mr. Everything at the receiver position was Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice uh, is the greatest wide receiver of all time. He holds all the records. Uh, who knows if his records will ever be broken. In fact, you can see on the bottom right there, uh, NFL.com rated him the number one NFL player of all time. Uh, he was just, he was without, yeah, without, you know, without match. He was the best. Uh, Jerry Rice uh, played for, tw for 20 seasons, for the 49ers mainly, for a, li a little bit for the Raiders, and right at the end for the Seahawks. He came out of Mississippi Valley State, which is a tiny little school, but even at Mississippi Valley State, he was an All-American there. Um, he was known as World because they said there wasn't a ball in the world he couldn't catch, and he was thought highly enough to be the 16th overall pick in the first round in the 1985 draft. For his career, he was selected to 13 Pro Bowls. He was 11 times an AP first team All Pro and one time a second team All Pro. So uh, 12, 12 times overall. Three Super Bowls uh, that he won with the 49ers. Two of them with Joe Montana as his quarterback, one of them with Steve Young as, as quarterback. And he was the Super Bowl MVP in the first Super Bowl he played in, Super Bowl 23. Uh, he was twice the NFL Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, he was, I mean, he, he was everything. He won every award. He was uh, selected to the NFL All-Decade Team for both the 1980s and 1990s. Um, of course, his number 80 jersey is retired by the 49ers, and he was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2010. But you can see on the right-hand side his career stats. Uh, over 1,500 receptions, almost 23,000 receiving yards, 197 receiving touchdowns. He led the NFL in receiving yards and touchdowns six times in his career. And um, after just looking at his stats, you can see he is the all-time leader in, in NFL history in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. He holds just about every record possible for receiving in both the regular season and postseason. You can see another record he has, an NFL record for most games played by a position player, not a kicker, but a position player, 303. NFL record for most career yards from scrimmage, 
record for most career touchdowns overall, 207, and a record for most 1,000-yard uh, seasons by a receiver with 14. Just remarkable, Jerry Rice. Here's some pictures, of course, of Jerry Rice catching the ball, catching touchdowns. Uh, unbelievable player, that's for sure. Marvin Harrison was one of the greats. Played for over a decade for the Colts. Uh, Peyton Manning was his quarterback for most of his career. And, boy, did they, those two had a connection. Um, he was the 19th pick in the 1996 draft. He made eight Pro Bowls. He made uh, eight All-Pro teams, three first team and five second teams. Uh, helped the Colts win a Super Bowl in 2000, the 2006 season. He led the NFL twice in receiving yards and twice in receptions. And uh, you can see his stats, over 1,100 receptions, 14,580 receiving yards, and 128 receiving touchdowns. Had eight seasons with at least 1,000 yards receiving, four seasons with at least 100 receptions. Um, unbelievable player, great route runner, and uh, could catch anything. Terrell Owens, one of the most, uh, let's put it this way, one of the biggest divas in NFL history. And, of course, the wide receiver position often attracts the divas. Of course, not, not all receivers are that way, but Terrell Owens certainly was. But also a remarkable player, great receiver, big, strong, tough. Uh, he was just a, a, an unbelievable player. Uh, he played for a decade and a half. You can see he played for multiple teams. Started out for the 49ers, then went to the Eagles, the Cowboys, and then right at the, toward the end, the Bills and the Bengals. But um, wasn't highly touted out of college. Was a third-round pick in 1996. I uh, played at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. But once he got into the pros, his game blossomed. And uh, he made six Pro Bowls. He was a five-time first-team All-Pro. Helped the, uh, the Eagles win the NFC Championship in 2004, although they, they lost the Super Bowl. Uh, he helped them get there. He led the uh, NFL in receiving touchdowns three times, and his stats speak for themselves. Almost 1,100 receptions, almost 16,000 receiving yards, and 153 receiving touchdowns, which he's third all time. He had nine seasons with at least 1,000 yards receiving, and he just, but part of the part of the reason he was on so many teams is because he, he kind of wore out his welcome, uh, you know, pretty quickly with a lot of franchises. He he would just his antics. He was always up to something. He'd, he'd have a sharpie in his pocket and score a touchdown, and and take the sharpie out and autograph the football and throw it to somebody. He, you know, he'd go over and sc he'd score a touchdown, go over and grab the cheerleaders' pom poms and start dancing with them uh, on the sideline. He'd go and after he scored a touchdown and grab uh, a fan's popcorn in the front row and and eat some of it. Yeah, he just he was always up to something. But uh, and he loved the media attention. He was always good for an interview. He loved the cameras on him, but uh, that was Terrell Owens, but he was a tremendous player on the field. Randy Moss is among the most physically gifted athletes that the NFL has probably ever seen. He played uh, for about a decade and a half, mainly for the Vikings, played for a little bit for the Raiders, kind of had a resurgence in his career with the Patriots, and then right at the end, of his career with the Titans and the 49ers, but uh, had gone to Marshall University. Uh, his story is really interesting. You know, he he was super highly touted out of high school. Every college wanted him, but he he was kind of in trouble, and uh, and so he lost a scholarship at Notre Dame. He ended up losing a scholarship uh, at Florida State um, after actually going there and redshirting for a year. And then instead of going to West Virginia University, and he was from a small town in West Virginia, everybody thought he would go to West Virginia University, but he decided to go to Marshall instead. And uh, he was an All-American at Marshall. He tore up college. It was, he just, nobody could guard him. He goes to the pros, and because of some fears that some teams had about his, his legal issues, uh, he fell to 21st, uh, you know, overall in the first round. Uh, otherwise, he he would have been in the top handful, I would think, three, four, five picks uh, that year. His physical abilities were amazing. Tall, great hands, could jump, 
could run like the wind. Uh, it, it, you couldn't double team him usually. Sometimes you couldn't triple team him. He, you know, he, he caught the ball anyway. Uh, when he wanted to play hard, he was unguardable. His issue was after he left the Vikings, or even right at the end of his Vikings stint, and then he went to the Raiders. Uh, he he'd take plays off. He you know he took series off. He he just didn't play hard all the time, and you know people thought his career was kind of kind of done. And then he goes to the Patriots, teams up with Tom Brady, and all he does is uh, record the NFL record for most touchdown receptions in one season with 23. And uh, he just he just was like I said, unstoppable, unguardable. He was the when he wanted to be, he was the best receiver in football. Uh, you can see seven Pro Bowls, four first team All Pros. Um, he went to two Super Bowls. Uh, unfortunately for him, his team lost both of them. But uh, but he but he went to two Super Bowls, one with the Patriots, one with the 49ers. and uh, he was just just awesome. Almost a thousand receptions for his career, over fifteen thousand receiving yards. You can see fifteen point six yards per catch. And he's second all-time in receiving touchdowns, next only to Jerry Rice. So, Randy Moss, if you know, if I if I had to start a team and I could pick one receiver from history to to be my my you know my head guy, my lead receiver, boy, I don't know. It's a tough choice. Obviously, Jerry Rice is up there. Obviously, you know, Don Hudson's got to be up there for his for his accomplishments early on, how he revolutionized the the position. Um, Calvin Johnson might be up there. Uh, but I'd have a hard time not taking Randy Moss. I mean, he's definitely up there. So there you go. Speaking of Calvin Johnson, Megatron, as he was known, he played for almost a decade for the Detroit Lions. And uh, after nine seasons, he said, I'm done. He, um, he was unbelievable. He was unguardable, uh, was a star at Georgia Tech. The Lions drafted him with the number two pick in the, in the 2007 draft. And six foot five, 239 pounds. He ran a 4-3-5-40. He caught everything. He could jump. Uh, again, he was like Randy Moss. You couldn't guard him with two guys and sometimes not with three. He just, you know, just throw the ball up. He's going to jump over guys. He can outmuscle him. Uh, just unbelievable. He still holds the record for most receiving yards in one season. He almost got to the 2,000 yard mark that year, 1,964 yards in 2012. He has the second most receiving yards in one game in NFL history with 329. He's the only receiver in NFL history with 5,000 plus receiving yards in a three year span. Uh, just unbelievable player. Of course, his stats would be who knows how much greater if he had played longer but he decided that uh, he had had enough after his time with the Lions and decided to, to hang it up and of course he will absolutely be uh, going into the Hall of Fame so that is Calvin Johnson let's look briefly at a few tight ends the tight end position is a is a really interesting position in football because tight end is expected to block uh, and catch passes. When they block, they run block, they can pass block, but they also need to have good hands and can catch passes and open up the receiving game and uh, make life a lot easier for a quarterback. Great tight ends make a quarterback's life uh, heavenly compared to what it'd be without a good tight end. So uh, let's look at a few of the great tight ends. The first Great tight end in pro football history has to be Mike Ditka. Mike Ditka, of course, later uh, gained more fame after his playing career as being the coach of the Bears and winning a Super Bowl in 1985. But he had a, a more than decade career starting out with the Bears, then went going to the Eagles, and finally the Cowboys. He had starred at Pittsburgh University, and he was the fifth overall pick in the 1961 draft. Uh, for his career, five Pro Bowl selections and five All-Pro selections, and uh, mostly with the Bears. He was unbelievable. He went to the Eagles, uh, kind of, he just kind of, you know, struggled with the Eagles. The reason he left the Bears is because he had a falling out with their uh, their owner, George Hallis, 
who was also the founder of the Bears, and uh, George Hallis just didn't want to pay top dollar for most players, and, and Mike Dicta thought he deserved top dollar at his position, being the best tight end uh, in the league. And so uh, Hallis got rid of him, sent him to the Eagles, and it didn't quite work out there. And then, and then uh, Tom Landry, the legendary coach of the Cowboys, said, hey, uh, Ditka, I think you can still play. I, I'm, I'm signing you, and uh, you're going to join our team. And with the Cowboys, uh, he helped them win a Super Bowl, Super Bowl six in the 1971 season. With the Bears, though, like I said, five All-Pros, and then he, he uh, also helped the Bears win an NFL championship before the Super Bowl era in 1963 he was the rookie of the year in 61 you can see his career stats over 400 receptions almost 6,000 receiving yards 43 touchdowns uh his number 89 jersey is retired by the bears after his career uh playing he became an, uh, a coach got into coaching helped the cowboys as an assistant and then became the head coach of the bears and later the new orleans saints with the Cowboys as an assistant, he helped win Super Bowl 12 in the 1977 season, and then as head coach of the Bears, leading the Bears to one of the all-time great teams, the 85 Bears, uh, led them to a Super Bowl. He was twice the NFL Coach of the Year with the Bears, and uh, he was uh, he was a megastar in Chicago. He could have run for mayor and probably won uh, when he was the coach of the Bears. But uh, he was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1988, being the first tight end inducted. Uh, into the Hall of Fame, and he's one of only two people to win an NFL title as a player, assistant coach, and head coach, and the other player, or the other person being Tom Flores, uh, who did that. But he's, Mike Dick is the only person in modern NFL history to win a championship with the same team as a player and head coach, and like I said, then after he got done coaching, when his coaching career was done, uh, well, even during his coaching career, like I said, he was a superstar, uh, with, in Chicago, he got into all kinds of endorsements. He endorsed everything from food to limo services to you name it, uh, to, you know, hair gel, uh, to, to underwear, to, he, I mean, if, if it was a product to be endorsed, he endorsed it and, um, he was just bigger than life. And then after his coaching career, he got into broadcasting, uh, commentating, I should say. Um, and, uh, he's a studio analyst and, you know, was for years. So, and Dick, uh, one thing about him that's great is he'll always give you a piece of his mind. He is not going to mince words. He's not going to sugarcoat things. He will tell you what he thinks and he'll be brutally honest with you. And he always makes for a good and entertaining interview. That's for sure. So Mike Ditka is a legend. And there he is on the sideline with the classic Bears, uh, you know, shirt and tie with the Bears sweater and his suit jacket over the top on the far right as an uh you know a studio analyst as a little bit of an older gentleman there and and then on the bottom that's the classic picture when he was coaching the bears and boy never met a player he didn't love to chew out that's for sure so mike ditka shannon sharp one of the great tight ends also in history played for a decade and a half um, he was a seventh round pick out of Savannah State. His brother, Sterling Sharp, was a great wide receiver in the NFL. And uh, Shannon got picked with the 192nd overall pick in the 1990 draft. Not much expected out of the you know, 192nd pick. But eight Pro Bowls later, four first team All Pro uh, selections and one second team All Pro selection. So five All Pro selections later and three Super Bowl championships later uh, two with the Broncos one with the Ravens uh, Shannon Sharp was a Hall of Famer so he went from seventh round pick to Hall of Famer 815 receptions over 10,000 receiving yards 62 touchdowns he finished his career as the all-time leader in all of those categories uh, uh, for a tight end and uh, Tony Gonzalez who we'll talk about in just a second came along and broke all three of those records but Shannon Sharp held the all-time records for tight end for receptions, yards, and touchdowns when he retired. Pretty amazing. And he was the first tight end in NFL history to amass over 10,000 receiving yards. So he was a difference maker, no doubt, and three Super Bowl rings prove it. And Tony Gonzalez. He is the greatest tight end ever. He played for over a decade and a half, mainly for the Chiefs, for the Falcons as well, uh, 
He played football and basketball at the University of California at Berkeley. And uh, probably, I mean, who knows, possibly could have been a pro basketball player, but football definitely was where his elite skills uh, resided. Um, he was the 13th overall pick in the 1997 draft. First tight end to ever, uh, ever to catch 1,000 passes to reach 15,000 yards. And at the time of his retirement, he held the records of most Pro Bowl appearances by a tight end, most career receiving yards, receptions, touchdowns, uh, consecutive starts by tight end. Uh, he holds no, numerous other NFL records. You know, um, he had 14 Pro Bowl appearances. I mean, that's unbelievable to be that good for that long uh, at your profession, and especially as a pro football player who, you know, the attrition uh, level for pro football players, these guys get banged up, they're injured all the time. And most, you know, most pro football careers don't last three years, uh, let alone be a pro bowler for 14 years. So you can see his career stats there. And he broke Shannon Sharp's records and, and Tony Gonzalez has those records. He's just, he was just incredible. He was like a tight end, like a big, or excuse me, he was like a big receiver on the field. He was fast, great hands, great route running, could block. Um, he was a like a big receiver. So, I mean, what kind of a luxury is that? That is just incredible. So there you go, guys. Some receivers and tight ends.